all maybe we're working uh looks like the mic might be working i was having some technical difficulties uh still running into some technical difficulties so bear with me cords getting pulled and shit not where it's supposed to be jason hello sir i'm still trying to get shit set up because i was having hardware difficulties and those seem to be fixed but it left me without software set up the way i wanted either all right we will enable and i will drag that over here so i can see it better perfect perfect javier hello try muting my phone if not Fiori will text me right in the middle of the chat. I got nothing set up to drink, so I'll be thirsty. Hello, everybody. This will be an obviously abbreviated live chat. Uh, today's live chat brought to you by Midwest Industries. Shinde, hello, sir. Speaking of Shinde, Shinde and I went to Midwest Industries on Monday and... Uh, that was pretty cool. I guess that's the biggest update I got. Uh, signature rifles they are selling. Uh, first batch gone. Uh, second batch being made now. Uh, I had to drop off some of the swag packs with the patches and the stickers and the coupons for the free class and that kind of thing. And uh, True North sent uh, another pile of grip stops out their way. Uh, they got laser some lowers, uh, Criterion sent them some more core barrels. So I think they got all the parts and, uh, now it's just time to put all them together. Iroquois foreskin. Hello, sir. Uh, so yeah, we got back to Pennsylvania yesterday and, uh, I, did not set up like I took the camera that you're watching me on with me. And by the time I wanted to set that up, uh, I waited too long and then had a hard time getting everything working together. Uh, but it is now. But yeah, like the mic and the camera, we're all in Wisconsin with this. And I thought it would all, everything would just set right back up. And it gave me some issues, hence the reason we're late. But, um, Went out there, uh, had a good time hanging out with uh, Pete and Troy, and I uh, got to meet Sean. He's the guy that puts all them rifles together. Uh, good stuff. We also went up and we visited Mike Ross at uh, Criterion and uh, got a tour of the place. Pretty awesome facility they got going on there. Uh, you'll see more criterion goodness floating around the tremis dynamics headquarters here um i just don't know what but you will be <laughs> for sure uh not to discount uh you know all the ba stuff that uh i use or the roscoe stuff but we're going to add some more criterion to the stable uh So let's see, those are those updates. Plus, uh, over here, over the other shoulder, you can see the little target template. Just mailed out the first batch of those today. For those of you that have ordered them, they are on the way. We have a spot on the website. Uh, you get uh, that, that guy, and then five of those mini targets for 20 bucks. Uh, They'll have some of those left, uh, at, least, at least a half a dozen of those kits left. If you're looking for a dry fire kit, they are available. Colt, hello, sir. Tim Larson, hello. Uh, so that's going on. Um, I think it was the only, only new thing there on that, that front. Um, planning to do some night vision stuff 
Um, went and had a great night vision private study group uh, with some patrolling and some building searching uh, and and some shooting, uh, na navigation, all that wrapped into one exercise. Um, to get invited to those, you have to come to the night vision study groups uh, to get vetted for your after dark safety, we'll call it. Um, we have night vision workshops as well. Those probably wouldn't hurt. Uh, Fish six as well as um, Nod carbine workshop. What are the prospects of getting a full-size template up for sale? Well, I found one extra one on the shelf uh, in my office so I can get one up for sale relatively quickly. I can put my fabricator type guys on the, uh, maybe get me some more of the big ones made. Uh, obviously I am not a priority when it comes to a fab shop making stuff because I pay less than big fab jobs, but they do like me there. Uh, and I usually have them, they just make them kind of out of uh, scraps, for lack of a better term. So if they're cutting out some projects and they have some leftover that they don't want to store, like, you know, a third of a sheet for months, hoping that they have something to cut it out of, they'll hack me a couple of target templates out of that. So uh, I will get in touch with them and see when the next batch of them came through. But I do have one extra one. Uh, in fact, it's... That one right there. That's the extra one. Um, the two that I use, uh, I have one and a backup, are all spray painted from laying them on targets. And psh, I usually use Sharpie, but once in a while, I'll spray paint. John, hello, sir. Uh, so that's the, I'll get on the target thing. But Jason, if you message me, uh, not what, like on the live chat, uh, I might be able to hook you up with that. Do uh, I don't have it on the website because I haven't had any for sale since I moved from Shopify to Big Commerce. But uh, we can do like a Venmo or something. Uh, I want to say that those were also twenty bucks plus shipping. Um, you don't get any full size spare targets with it. Uh, Mostly because that's meant to go on targets you shoot with real bullets. And like you, nobody buys those by the five. I mean, I wouldn't think you buy them by the five. I think you buy them by the hundred. I buy them by the hundreds. So uh, there's that. Javier is loving the short slide macro. I'm a big fan of the macro. I'm a big fan of the short slide. Don't know if I want them together, but... I prefer the long, longer slide on all of them, including the skinnier grips. But I understand there are places where the short slide is a bit more concealable. Uh, what is up there? Oh, okay. Uh, let's see what else we've got going on. Um, those are up on the website. Uh, no, that's a new product release. Not really ready to talk about that yet. So we'll hold off on that one. Um, I didn't make any notes for today. So, you know, you get what you get. If you guys got questions, I'll, I'll have answers, I assume. Um, oh, uh, I did not know until yesterday... Uh, or I guess I uh, Friday. I found out Friday that if you run a 308 AR, uh, like of the DPMS pattern and not the, uh, but I guess it would be the Knights pattern is the other one. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Midwest has a combat rail, a 308 combat rail, uh, probably a few sizes, uh, like lengths. Um, I did not realize that they released that rail, uh, but I got a new rail. I upgraded from the, I guess it's their second generation rail to the combat rail uh, on the 308. And it has the newer barrel nut design, 
with the patented little plate torque plate i think it's called um so yeah if you didn't know about that for 308s that is out uh, i know it comes in a 15 inch because i have a 15 inch rail i don't know what other uh lengths it comes in but that was a new product that i new to me product it came out when i guess when the combat rails came out and that was that was a few rails back but uh that's pretty slick uh let's see I got a couple other things in the fire that I can't really talk. Oh, I know what I'm talking about with the night vision. Back to the night vision. Um, so with the night vision, one of the things we're looking at doing is holding a night vision shooting competition, like running a match. Um, haven't figured out all of the details yet, um, but uh, we're going to have a trophy. And the trophy, you get your name laser engraved on it. Uh, it's going to be like the Stanley Cup. And then like you get to have the trophy until the next night vision competition. Um, and the, it's going to be like a wooden base, I think a wooden base or something like that. And then on the top, instead of having like a shooter guy, it's going to be a golden mall. So that'll be pretty cool. Uh, they already have scar stuff. Doesn't mean West already have scar stuff. Well, Crutcher, you're late. So was I. So it doesn't really matter. Um, let's see. Or oh yeah, with the night vision, with the competition thing. So I think we're gonna do. It's gonna be pretty open form. We're gonna use uh, the big, you know, like Ipsic targets, but with the the stencil. And uh, I don't care if you shoot it with pistol. I don't care if you shoot it with rifle. We might actually do, and we might just do it a night competition. And the two categories can be white light and nods. And maybe we'll do a, a trophy with a flashlight on the top, like a scout light. And then a trophy with a golden scout light and a golden ball. Hmm? Uh -huh. What are you thinking? And uh, I got the scoring system figured out, I think. Um, so, like, there'll be targets, and there'll be a time, and you have to shoot the targets. And if you get a hit in the heart or brain, that's the triangle or the, the oval, one hit with either a pistol or a rifle, you kill it. Like, it's, it's deads. If you get it in the vitals, which is the section with like the lungs and the neck and all this around the head that isn't the brain, with two rifle hits or five pistol hits, so we could do two and five. I might just, yeah, I might not. Two pistol hits or five, or two rifle hits or five pistol hits. Uh, it's dead. And. If you don't kill a target, it's an extra minute to your time. So we've got 10 targets, and you do it 15 seconds, you could have a 10-minute, 15-second time. That's how we're going to score it. So that is the update on shit we're going to do and utilize the Dwarven target template. In addition, we'll have some cool trophies. Uh See, I did get a text message. Good thing I muted that. All right. So um, I don't think, I'll go over here and check. I don't think anyone posted any questions. I also didn't really make a post asking if anyone had any questions. Um, oh, turns out Facebook tells me I'm live and it even has a, Happening now, I can, oh, yep, nobody asked any questions. So if you got some, you all should post them up shortly because, well, it's already 8.30 and I have no notes to go over. So I did hear today, I, I like, <laughs> it's funny, uh, since yesterday, uh, pretty much nonstop, uh, 
I've been getting the, hey man, did you see the picture, the Navy picture on the social media, uh, including up to about an hour ago? Uh, yes, I have seen it. Uh, I don't know uh, what what people expect anyone to say about it. Um, someone said, "Oh yeah, Kurt over at uh, VSO, Kurt Holstrom. He did a he has a breakdown of it." I I, I don't. I don't know what there is to break down. It's a rifle that some E3 gunners mate put a scope on and then an O5 fucking officer shot it for a photo shoot. Um, and somewhere today, after all of that, there is a chief petty officer reaming out said E3 gunners mate who totally punked his, his CO, which is funny in its own right. Uh, but like, there's your breakdown. Ta-da. Uh, but yes, I've seen it. Uh, not shocked. I think every one of you who has been in class with me when I would give my, my, how did I get here? You know, I was born a, a, a poor black woman speech and uh, says, yeah, I didn't learn anything cool in the Navy. I didn't think that that was a secret. Anyhow. That's that. It's. There's an E nothing that that totally punked his O something. And I'm more I would be more interested to hear everything that happened to him afterwards. Sonny, hello, sir. I hope you are have safe travels in your Tennessee, Texas travels. Uh, I saw that you were had a good time out in Tennessee, and I assume that at some point you're heading back to Texas if you haven't already. So hopefully that all is safe and enjoyable uh speaking of sunny uh there we have some stuff coming up he and i together right before the muster um, if i had my notes pulled up and was actually prepared for all this instead of fucking around with computers and cameras and getting them to work together um i would have a link that i could automatically just type in there or highlight or copy and paste for you. Oh, there we go. Oh, I'm getting it. Well, that's for Mr. Biggers, who's also going to be here for the muster. Uh, oh, that was Klaus. All right, maybe I don't have the link on my notes. I just have a note. It says, Science of Dynamic Violence before the muster, followed by the Crucible. Uh, some of you have gotten... Invites to the Crucible. Uh, if you signed up for the Science of Dynamic Violence, you automatically got an invite for the Crucible. Uh, some other folks got invites or have asked for invites. And you said, yes, I am in. You will be getting an invoice for the your acceptance of that this week. That is on my agenda for this week. Because uh, if you go to the website and like look for the Crucible, it says they're not available because it's invite only. And we didn't just want a bunch of fucking schmucks signing up. Like you needed to convince us or we had already had to have decided that you were the right kind of guy for this class. Oh, two days of rain straight in Texas. Damn. That's a that's abnormal for Texas. Uh, hasn't been abnormal for here. I think we had five or six days straight of rain before I went to Wisconsin. And it rained on the way to Wisconsin. Fucking dog, I'm telling you, I'll have to go down there and and yell at him. Uh, he sees something outside because it's those type of barks. Uh, but with the Crucible, if you got the invites and everything, uh, shortly here, you'll be getting a thing that says pay up. Now, for the rest of you folks, um, if you're coming to the Crucible, pretty sure that uh, the cost of the class is 300 bucks. If you're going to the science of dynamic violence, it's half price. So if you are thinking of, you've accepted the invite to the crucible and you weren't going to do the previous three days, you can save some money if you spend some extra money. Just throwing that out there. Uh, along with the muster, uh, we have stuff happening after the muster. Sonny has, uh, oh, damn. 
both of your ponds got joined. That's some fucking, that's a lot of water. What I noticed about Texas, uh, a lot in West Texas, when they talk about flash floods that they get out there, uh, and that landscape looks a little different than East Texas, but all the ground's like fucking cement. And uh, it does not surprise me that it doesn't drain well because it doesn't get a lot of rain uh, often. So the ground is not normally loose and ready to absorb water. But uh, after the muster, we got the musters on Saturday, August 3rd, Sunday, the 4th in Danville, Rock God Brewing. Sunny is doing a conflict management class, uh, which I was in last year, and it was awesome. Um, also, that same Sunday at Sugarloaf at the range, Biggers is doing uh, the Red Zone Live Fire One Day class. And on Monday at the range, he is doing the Red Zone Force on Force class. Um, the night before the muster, uh, on Friday, the day of the crucible, that evening here in Bloomsburg, Jonathan Aldridge of Iron Forge Consulting is doing a uh, intro to tactical medicine. I'm pretty sure that's what the name of it is. Um, don't quote me on that. Uh, it is over on bulletin.net, though. Um, trying to see if I have the link handy. I probably don't. Nope. I don't even have a note for it, which is weird because he was on the live chat. I probably just let him have the note. Uh, also, uh, or type the note. Way before, not way before, uh, so the, was it, Tuesday starts the Science of Dynamic Violence. The previous Saturday and Sunday is uh, Patrolling the Homestead, uh, and that is a joint class between Andrew of Combat Art Training and Jay of Preelectus training. Uh, so you could come and get a whole lot of training back to back to back. There's me a pile of instructors here and one, two, three, four, five, six. Six of them have classes around the muster. So there's a lot of fucking training opportunities uh, this year. Iroquois Forskin says, are these all for the muster or something different? Well, the things I mentioned were all the classes surrounding the muster. Uh, so all these guys are, you know, coming in from Florida um, and Texas. Uh, Zach's coming in from Indiana. Jonathan's coming up from Virginia. But they're going to do some classes around it. All those guys will also be here for the muster, giving some blocks of instruction on well, whatever the fuck they feel like giving blocks of instruction on. I also have some other folks that are coming just for the muster. Like Zach is not teaching anything at the muster, but he will be back out a few weeks later. Um, and maybe a, maybe a month. No, I think it's just a few weeks later for some shotguns. Or no, he's doing a, a entangle gunfighting and definitive retention a couple weeks later. So he's going to come out to the muster with the idea of building up some hype so that a couple weeks later when he comes back, Maybe some folks will like what they see at the muster and sign up for some some more classes. Mike Fiore, hello, sir. He will also be at the muster. Um, I don't know what all the muster will entail as far as like hands-on stuff and not hands-on stuff, like indoors, outdoors, you know, seminar type or doing things. Um, we have two medics, so they're gonna one's gonna do some hands-on and one's gonna do some not hands-on stuff. Uh, Andrew Meisker, uh, Meisker's Magic of Medicine, uh, making a return visit as he did from the first muster. Uh, he will be out here as well. I also have some other invites uh, floating around for folks that are pretty sure they can make it but aren't a hundred percent. So I haven't announced them. Uh, but it should be a, a pretty swell time. You can already... Ooh, don't hold me to the fact that you can already sign up because I may be speaking before putting a cart before the horse because I think I might be waiting on artwork, like a thumbnail, for the next muster. 
Um, oh, you can sign up. The thumbnail just is last year's thumbnail and has the wrong date on it. Uh, so I guess if Mike is listening still, uh, we need a new thumbnail. Or if you whipped one up for me and I didn't uh, didn't add it, it's my bad, which is always a possibility. But yes, the uh, the muster in twenty twenty four is sign upable. Yep. Okay. So you can sign up for said muster. You can also sign. Oh, the other thing is, if you sign up for the uh, science of dynamic violence and the crucible, we throw the muster in for free. I also believe. Mm, I believe if you are a Tremis Dynamics alumni, there is a discount for the red zone. But also don't quote me on that. Uh, I'm looking to see if I have any other notes here about the stuff around the muster. There will not be, I was asked this, uh, what night vision stuff is going to be happening around uh, on the evening of the muster. And that is a big fat none, um, mostly because I am teaching with Sonny for the four days before the muster. And then we're going to have a bunch of crap the day of the muster. Uh, being able and ready that evening to do some night vision stuff at a whole different range that isn't. We're not using for any of the other stuff. Uh, there's no chance. Um, so no night vision at the muster. Sorry, guys. Uh, maybe for the 2025 muster, we'll do something night vision related. And it'll be a different instructor than me. Uh, so that I don't have another thing to do, but we might be able to muster something up. Let's see what I did there. Um, and now Mike putting the onus on me to remind him to do artwork for the this year's muster. Like I can remember stuff. All right, so that's the the muster notes. Uh, some of those pieces are coming together. Um, we might do a workshop next year, some type of workshop after the muster, and not just make it for everyone coming to the muster, uh, because there were like 85 people last time, and I don't know what we could do with 85 people in a limited amount of time in the range and in the, in the dark, because it isn't even at the same place as the as the muster and it wouldn't hold 85 people it certainly wouldn't you couldn't park 85 people there so we will come up with something uh next year dark related for like the evening after the muster i think that'll happen for someone like so someone not this guy uh, i'll be there but like somebody else can run it all because that'll give them while i'm doing shit at the muster they can hang around until like lunchtime. And then they can take off to the range to go get the range set up for what they need for the evening. Mass fighting in the dark. Pure chaos. Everybody bring a sim gun and a mask and a flashlight. Uh, yeah, it'd be hectic. I think out there we have room to park probably 10 cars. Um uh, and it ain't a very big range either. Uh, for those of you that know and are picturing in your head, haven't been out to the dark range that we use, um, it is not the range that we do live fire classes out here. Um, it is 40 minutes away, maybe. Uh, so like from Bloomsburg, half hour east is the live fire range. And a half hour south is the dark range. So they're not they're not close to each other. And then the force on force 
is northeast and it's about an hour and 15 minutes away. So you pass the live fire range to get up there. And then about 15 minutes directly west, uh, much uh, kind of closer to the dark range is the brewery where we do all of our seminars uh, on Sundays. And about six miles from the dark range is the area that we're doing the patrolling the homestead with Jay and Andrew. Um, so they talked about maybe doing a live fire night portion, uh, which is totally doable because their class has a size limit. Uh, and it's only like six miles from where we're doing stuff with them to go over to the range in the dark. So, uh, one of the days, cause their class is Saturday and Sunday. So if they want to do something Saturday night, uh, I can probably clear it with the chief of the PD who it's their range about have, getting it that night. Uh, so Andrew, if you're, or Jay, if you're listening, uh, remind me uh, to talk to you like this week and we'll see if we can't get, uh, the logistics covered if you want to add a live fire portion. I, I know they're doing night stuff that uh, wasn't going to have live fire in it, but if they were willing to travel, we can go do some live fire stuff. Tom Holliday, hello, sir. Oh, Sonny says the mass fighting in the dark should be all fists. Maybe some elbows and knees, a foot or two. I see where he's going with this. Well, if we're doing that, I don't have to even use the, the dark range. We just need somewhere we can go in the dark. I got a city park we can use. Uh, vehicle invading forces. Actually, at the new range, the dark range, uh, we may be adding some daylight vehicle classes to that. Um, because right next door to the range, uh, like right next door, is a scrapyard. And the uh, police who have that range told me that the scrapyard will just pick up a car with like a front end loader, scoop it up or whatever, and drive it over and sit it where we want it and then come get it when the class is over and put it back in the scrapyard because uh, they're just going to crush it. So it doesn't matter what we do to it. And they have cars there so they could just provide one for us and then come get it. Um, which for those of you who on the instructing side of things have uh, dealt with vehicle classes, the vehicles are the biggest pain in the ass. Uh, getting a vehicle, getting rid of a vehicle. It's easier to get one than it is to get rid of one. Uh, but since we have a scrapyard handy, we now have the ability to maybe add some vehicle shit. Um, I just got to figure out when, like my schedule doesn't have a lot of open slots in it. Um, and after talking to the fellas in Wisconsin, uh, the, the little bit of free time I had set aside after the muster in August, uh, I might be filling that up with uh, teaching a rifle class in Wisconsin. So maybe, uh, maybe, or Possibly, possibly a fish class because I hear there's a shoot house. It's a live fire shoot house. So to do fish um, five in that, which is the li a live fire, uh, or just the regular fish. That seems to be the way to go because uh, that's how you bet people for the live fire version is in the force on paper and force on force. And... Uh, I don't, I don't know where I would get the people for Fish 5 if I hadn't run a Fish 1 or 2 out there. But that range could offer us that. We could actually do some vehicle stuff in the dark. Um, trying to think of how we could do this, not being guaranteed that the vehicles would turn on and I could like have headlights or not headlights. Great to have a police cruiser out there with some red and blues flash and make everything disorienting like uh, and then shoot them all up uh, so getting the cruiser might be more difficult but we'll have to put some thought into that and talk to my my knowledgeable people about what we can do for a night or for a dark vehicle class make it interesting and not just the same as a day vehicle class but in the dark i'm not a big fan of that uh those of you who've been to a couple of my classes know that uh like when we do 
like the difference between a pistol class and a carbine class. It's not just, hey, everything that we did with a pistol, we're doing with a rifle. Uh, there is overlap, obviously, uh, but it isn't just the same thing with a different gun. So it would be a vehicle night class. Well, I wouldn't want just to be the day class, but in the dark. Like it just doesn't, doesn't float my boat. Although uh, we do uh, Adeptus vehicle, which is like a day four vehicle, uh, essentially, because we have a day three vehicle as well. And Adeptus is all force on force. And so you might have four guys in the car reacting to an ambush. And the other students who are in the other group are going to be your ambushers. Um, so that does give us maybe the opportunity, if we have the vehicle out there, to do uh, that in the dark. So that it, it's, you know, the force on force scenarios would just be more difficult to see. Well, I already got a couple of scenarios in my mind. So maybe that'll be the case. The problem with that is with UTM being fucking total shitbirds, uh, burning through a bunch of UTM ammo becomes difficult, which means a different source of non-lethal projectiles required. I'm not buying 10 airsoft rifles for folks to use. So, or like the unit four guns, those guns are great. Uh, but me investing in 10 of them and then setting them all up with different types of optics and lights and stuff like that's that's not an option either. Now, if people wanted to buy their own, uh, which I think serious students of training, uh, you know, might be more inclined to own their own non-lethal firearms or firearm the replicas. Uh, but the problem with that is. Like the unit four is pretty new, but everyone can just go buy one. Uh, Airsoft tends to be, there's a lot of junk out there. And Sims and UTM weren't available for people to get their own, which is why instructors had to buy a fucking dozen. But, oh, excuse me. I'm thinking maybe uh, maybe the those might be a little more, uh, I don't want to say elite, but difficult for people to participate in. But we might do somewhere you will be required to provide your own uh, non-lethal training device, uh, whether that be a unit four or an airsoft uh, or fuck. I don't care if it's Sims or UTM. If you got the, the juice to get some, some bullets for it, like those are fine too. Uh, Cause the safety gear that, uh, that we use will work for all of them. So, uh, I am going to pick up my own unit four gun and, uh, deck it all out in, in cool guy stuff. But, I don't, I want, I'm not buying enough for loaners. I wonder what it takes to be a dealer for them. Maybe get you guys like a, a price break for like serious students that want to invest. I have to look into that. I have to talk to those guys. No, I should make fucking notes. Like check into unit four, becoming a dealer, to hook up students. Or, you know, if they just want to offer a discount. Or something like a, a coupon code to maybe save you guys a couple dollars. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about with those, um, Unit Four Solutions is the name of the company. They have a dealer deal. I make my note. They have ARs that uh, they're made by LMT, but they're not a firearm. Like you can't convert them to shoot real bullets, but uh, the outside is like a one-to-one -one replica. Uh, and the magazines have cartridges. Uh, they're called T-Packs. I used to have a pile of them here. I think I threw them away for, finally. And it's a plastic thing. It holds like 30 little uh, Nelson brand paintballs. And Nelson's a fine company for making encapsulated uh, paintballs. They're, they're small. Uh, I don't remember what size. Bigger than airsoft, uh, but uh, more paint in it. About the size of a sim round. Uh, this is the the projectile, uh, and, and the paint is actually marks way better than sims or UTM. But anyhow, there's these cartridges, and it has like a. It's not a 12 gram CO2. It's a 20 gram, 
and it drops into this metal magazine that closes in the bottom so you can have a couple mags on you and then when you put it in the gun it pierces the co2 charges the gun up the paintballs are spring loaded they feed up and you get like 30 rounds dump the mag out put a fresh one in and it's got enough co2 and paintballs in it for a whole mags worth uh they sent me one to t and e uh it worked fine uh and knowing that it was co2 i took it out when the temperatures were in single digits because co2 works like shit when it's cold so it was like nine degrees out and i got 28 of the 30 rounds out of the magazine before it was like bleh, and was just done with didn't have enough co2 so short of it had been like 30 degrees out you know there's plenty of extra CO2. So I'm guessing somewhere in the teens is the, the, the maximum for you to get all 30 rounds out of one CO2 cartridge. Uh, and then per shot, after you buy the gun, uh, it's the it's the only thing cheaper is Airsoft. Uh, but it's closer to Airsoft than it is to live fire. So if Airsoft is a penny per trigger press, uh, which is probably less, the Unit 4 is like, a nickel per trigger press where live fire is 50 cents and UTM is a buck. So it is much more affordable. Tom says physical airsoft stores typically know what you're looking for. Indeed. Um, I went to high school with a, a fella who lives up in Lock Haven that has an airsoft field. Um, and my airsoft gun, which is over there in the corner, uh, he said, yep, this is, I, I know what you do. He was, he's a, an alumni. Uh, he said, this is the, this is, is the gun that you want for a price that you will be willing to pay. Uh, and I want to say I paid like 400 bucks for it. You know, and it's not like a plastic Tokyo Marui. I don't know if Tokyo Marui makes plastic guns anymore, if they're metal too. Um, the only downside to it is it has its own, uh, size threaded barrel nut the size is the same barrel nut as an ar barrel nut but it's a different threading so i can't replace the rail on it without buying the die that threads the front of a receiver uh because he he told me that he's seen lots of his customers that uh retap those threads so that it was the not a metric threading for so a regular ar barrel nut will go on it and once you do that, you could put whatever rail goes with said barrel nut. Um, so that's the only like oddball thing to it. I mean, it's got like left-handed threads for the, the suppressor because that's the Airsoft standard. Uh, Crytac is the name of the company. And it's made by Chris, like the people make the Chris Vector. Uh, it's their Airsoft division. And um, the only thing, you know, like we talked about with it was... Uh, first shot drop off and only using semi-auto uh he did give me some some tidbits on how to uh things to do to the gun to get the first shot drop off to not be an issue but uh, a lot of those things require beefing up gear boxes and shit so that it uh when you run full auto uh, you're not overpowering the gearbox i would not allow any full auto at class so like if i had loaners that wouldn't be an issue because I would literally just drill a hole in the receiver and put a screw in it so that the thumb safety would not go to full auto uh, because I don't see why students who are coming to do force on force would ever flip their gun to full auto because um, they don't own full auto guns to shoot regularly. Uh, you know what? I think I haven't done it to that one over there yet, but when I do, I maybe I'll put one of them little blue screws in it, like our, uh, you know, the, the lockout screws for, uh, IR lasers that keep it from being too powerful for, you know, friendlies, because that kind of fits the theme of full auto is not something we would use on training uh, because we don't have full autos that were. Um, Tom has a couple Glock licensed airsofts. I have 10 of those. Um, there's one sitting behind the camera. I would hold up and show it. Um, the, uh, I have 10 Glock 17s and I think 30 magazines for it. Uh, they work well. Pistols work great. Um, I got the adapter. So we use a uh, Coleman gas instead of green gas. Uh, 
it stinks worse because uh, Coleman gas has the additive in it so that, you know, if there's a gas leak in your Coleman stove, uh, like propane does. Uh, I don't know if you all know that, but propane is odorless. They add the scent so that, you know, if there are leaks like with natural gas or natural gas has that. I don't know if propane does, um, which is a type of natural gas. But yeah, the pistols work great. And we've used those for uh, the diagnostic class. And uh, the only issue we had is we did the class indoors once and the magazines on the concrete floor uh, fucked up a lot of magazines. I went with 30 and came back with 12. Uh, almost all of them had broken base plates and some of them had broken feed lips. Uh, but as long as we were in gravel, dirt or grass, never had anything really go down. Uh, worked out pretty good. In fact, hang on a second. I'll grab one. So that is the Glock 17 airsoft gun. You can see in the front, it has like a fucking thing that sticks out that's orange that tells you like, hey, it's a, it's not real. Uh, but it sticks out much further than a, the barrel on a real Glock. So if you have a closed bottom holster, it won't go in it. Uh, and those are left-handed threaded. So I just turned it right-handed until it broke off and left a little orange ring. Uh, but we also painted all the grips orange on our guns. Uh, so when it's in your holster, I can see that it's orange. Uh, the other thing we did, I talked to a, a fellow from Powerhouse uh, paintball they make uh paintball regulators he was in class and tyler uh with the broken base plates we got uh fuck, who makes these they're like the vickers base plates tango down maybe uh they come in orange so we just bought those but uh what we had to do to modify them uh so that we could adapt them to airsoft because the the plate slides out of the way so that you can gas it up and then the plate comes back to protect the nozzle for the gas uh, so we just had to do some, some modifying on the inside of the base plate so that it would still slide out of the way. Uh, I don't have the thing to push, uh, probably push down this or not. Is it this one? Yeah. So it still slides out of the way and then you can gas it up and slide it back. But that saved the base plates, uh, still the, the feed lip things at the front, those are still plastic. So not a whole lot we can do with those but yeah we got 10 of them so we can integrate those into stuff uh, you'll see a lot of these at the science of dynamic violence i imagine all 10 of these are going to get quite the workout uh, we also have five utm glock 19s and one utm m p those are going to get used up a bunch i have some ammo set aside utm pistol utm ammo set aside for that class um, so we'll be able to use those if we need a little more, uh, a little more ass than the airsoft gun, uh, depending what we're doing, we may want to have be a little more, uh, I don't want to say punishment, but a little more consequence. Um, OSHA blue plus two safety. Uh, my UTM guns are blue, so I just stuck with the orange. Uh, and then all the stuff I have, it has lasers, uh, like the certs and the mantises, they're all red. So I'm a little, little color coded. Uh, even my, I have a couple uh, Pelican cases that are orange for the airsofts and a blue one for the UTMs. I know that's gay, but I like colors. I like color coding shit. I can't help myself. Um, but yeah, I got enough UTM ammo for the science of dynamic violence and the crucible for a pistol. I actually have, I have a little bit for carbine, uh, and I want to do some carbine stuff there. We'll probably use some Blackbeards uh, for ARs. If you don't have an AR, you might need to get an AR or I'll loan you an AR. I have plenty of extras, I guess. We like to probably outfit the whole class because uh, we also have loaner Blackbeards as well. Uh, that'll get us some force on paper stuff uh, that we can do, get some reps in with uh, because UTM ammo again being difficult to get and i don't have as much utm car uh, rifle ammo set aside as i do pistol ammo um and i'm still trying to source some more uh that'll be here in time but uh 
uh, I got to get you a price on an MP cert pistol. Well, whatever I paid is what you would pay because I don't have a hookup for cert with cert. Uh, I do have a cert training certificate. Uh, they had a, a instructor class for how to use utilize cert uh, as an instructor, um, but there was no. I'm not a dealer, so I got no hookup price. Like I just get on the website and buy them. Um, and I don't think the MMP's ever been on sale. Uh, the plastic slide Glocks have been on sale. I think that's the 110. Don't quote me on that. That might be the, because they have a metal slide 19 and the 17 comes in metal or plastic. The plastic one is the only one I ever see on sale. Uh, but I do have a MMP cert gun sitting right over there. Um, if they made a macro cert gun, I would own one of those as well. However, however, uh, I am now a dealer for a dry fire mag and there is a smart dry fire mag that they are using a somebody's laser cartridge, but it's a special laser cartridge because it's activated by the dry fire mag, not by the striker in your pistol. So, uh, you can't just buy a dry fire mag and use your pink rhino laser cartridge or your laser man laser cartridge because uh, it's it needs to be activated by the magazine not by the uh the striker because the striker doesn't do its thing when you run a dry fire mag um, so they're selling a kit with a dry fire mag that and the laser that gets activated by said magazine so you get a resetting trigger and a laser uh, the battery is in the laser the magazine just has the trigger resetter in it um It's out already for Glock 19s, Glock 48s, and SIG 320s. Or 17s. It's a 17-round magazine, sorry. Uh, and the big, like, AX something Legion 320 and a Glock 48, which also work in the 43, and the 43X, obviously. The macro magazine is coming out real soon, which is why I got set up to be a dealer. Uh, so as soon as the macro releases, I'm going to, uh, do a pre-order because I have to have a certain size opening order. Uh, and I need more macro magazines than I do anything else uh, because the guys that train with me regularly, we there are more macros and 365 XLs, like if you add those together, than all the models of Glock. So, uh, like, I'm not buying 100 fucking Glock mags and then having to buy another order for my, for my local guys uh, later. So I'm going to do my opening order once the macro mags release so I can do a bunch of macro mags, some Glock mags. Um, and then you'll use your gun. Um, and the bottom of that magazine is orange so that it's easy to see that it's the dry fire mag and some of the magazines i don't know how the macro one's going to be and i don't know which magazines come this way and, and don't but some of them have the magazines uh all plastic and it's like two halves that bolt together because it's got up some mechanisms and stuff on the inside of them uh but some of them have a piece of pick rail molded into the base plate so you can put a mantis x10 on the bottom and get your laser pistol and uh, already have a spot for the x10 the problem with putting an x10 on your rail is that then you got to have a flashlight holster in order to holster the gun uh, so that mantis makes base plates for magazines so you can with the pick rail on it but i think the dry fire mag ones are coming now with some pick rail on the bottom of it so you don't have to replace anything or glue on pick rail or any of that stuff so they'll be pretty cool and i would as soon as the macro is released i'm gonna have some on the website uh, uh, for sale. And before I put them on the website, I'm going to do a pre-order, which I will mention like over on the alumni group uh, because I'll offer it in order to build up enough sales to get the opening order, the whatever the, the particular size opening order that they're asking for. Uh, I'll offer alumni a price that I'm not allowed to advertise at just so I can get enough units ordered. Um, so when that's happening, uh, pay attention. I'll I'll note it like on the live chats and on the regular social media is like, hey, go over to the alumni page so that you can, uh, you know, we can get you on board for 
a good price on the opening order. Uh, Iroquois Foreskin says that he'll need to get some for the MP. They have the dry fire mag for the MP, the regular one that just resets the trigger. Uh, they don't have the smart one that works with the laser. I imagine it's coming too uh, because they already make one of the parts for it, and the other part is just the laser. Uh, they just have to make. Um, so the dry fire mag has some stuff that sticks out the top, kind of like this airsoft gun does. And I think it's the trigger bar that hits that. So when you press the trigger, it moves this lever that sticks out the top of the magazine until it can click. And then it uh, resets the, the trigger bar. So you, that's how you get your trigger reset. Well, on the smart one, that piece sticks up further and interacts with the back of that laser cartridge. Uh, so since they already make a M&P dry fire mag, it has a little thing sticking up and the cartridge is just the cartridge with a bigger different ass end on it so that it doesn't need a, a striker to hit it they just need to redesign the top lever part to go hit it uh since they have everything else already designed so i would guess that the guns that dry fire mag makes dry fire mags for probably all of them at some point will get the smart dry fire mag as well uh so I didn't ask him about an m and um, but I figure since they started with the Glock 17, they've added, then they added the 320, then they added the Glock 48, and now they're adding the macro. My guess is they're going to keep expanding that until they get all the, the guns that they're selling stuff for. However, now is not a great time, I think, for them to want to do an m and because the m and sales are through the floor, uh, just not selling a lot um the metal framed one had a had a little boost in sales uh, but for the most part they're not it's not selling a lot of guns which means there's going to be less demand for things like cert guns and i don't i the cert the mp cert was the second one they made back when mps were much more popular. I think if they didn't have it already, they wouldn't even make one because they don't, there's not enough people with MMPs to want uh, a duplicate. I, I probably at this point think that uh, CZ and Walther probably sell more striker fired nine mil double stacks than Smith does. Uh, I don't think they're any better. I think both of those brands are worse but they're releasing new stuff that gets people interested and then the gun sells and smith has not done a lot to make the mmp popular adam hall better late than never i too was late you're okay um so yeah that's uh we'll have those at some point here also uh have not done it yet but my UTM MMP and two of the Glocks have replacement sights on them. Uh, UTM Glock 19 slides, the sights aren't removable. They're just part of the slide, uh, one solid piece. So I sent them off to ATEI to get machined off and then a dovetail in the back and the stupid Glock thing in the front, that, that slot. Uh, that was like 200 bucks a slide to be able to put iron or regular iron sights on them. So I think I have a, the MMP has big dots. One of the Glocks has big dots. The other one has excess R3D, RD3, R3Ds, radioactive three dots. Um, but when I was at excess in the spring, I got 10 sets of big dots for the airsoft guns. Um, they donated those so that you all, could have big dots um so excess is the official sponsor of the uh diagnostics class and well the, anything that uses those airsofts um because they totally hooked you guys up not really a me hookup because i don't ever use them um i actually had for a brief moment a mmp airsoft gun and uh got rid of it because it was co2 and everything else had is green gas so uh, I mean, I use these as much as you guys do, but it isn't like mine. 
So they donated 10 big sets of big dots for you all. Uh, so just remember that like after the science of dynamic mm -hmm. violence, all you guys that are in that class and use the big dots, uh, don't be afraid to, uh, either shoot them a message on the social medias or take a picture of the gun or you doing something cool with said gun with the big dots on it. And then, you know, thank them for donating them. Uh, they like, you know, everybody likes to hear that they're appreciated when they do something for somebody. Jason, awesome. I will keep you in mind as well for when they do the laser, the smart one. Um, it's already out. I just, uh, I got to wait until the macro comes out so that I can split my order between Glock and SIG. Uh, ATI is a cool group of people. Yeah, I had, uh, I had good luck with using them for that machining process. Uh, I have an MMP with... Uh, cocking serrations on the top of the slide that they did uh faster turnaround than i expected and uh superb machining the machining on the uh the utm guns top notch uh everything was perfect as good as probably better tolerances than straight from glock um, just expensive like you figure a, a utm slides like 500 bucks if you buy the Glock to put the slide on, that's 500 bucks. I'm already a thousand dollars into this. It's 200 bucks to get it machined for iron sights. Um, you can't put a red dot on it. Um, they actually do offer a service where they will laser weld. They machine it for the red dot, but it goes into these voids. They're inside the air, the, the UTM slides so that the laser weld all those shut and then machine it. And that's like three, four hundred dollars, and then three or four hundred dollars for the red dot to put on it. At that point, the UTM started making an MOS slide for Glocks. It's like six hundred bucks, and it only works on Gen fives. Apparently, I don't know. I don't have one. Uh, if you wanted a dot on your Glock, I would go that route. Spend the extra hundred on the slide, and then just throw an RMR on the top. But if you had one of the older ones, you're hundreds more dollars into trying to get it set up. Um, it'd be awesome if a cool company made uh, competitor stuff to UTM and um, didn't fuck over American citizens and also made it affordable. Uh, Congress is the reason the UTM is so expensive. Um, not because of like tariffs or importing because it's all imported from England because they passed a law saying that the U.S. military is not legally allowed to buy things at a price different than what the American citizen buys it for. So they thought they would save the military some money, you know, like $500 toilet seats, et cetera, et cetera. Like, oh, well, they won't do that anymore because they won't allow them to, to pay that much. So what like UTM did and the Knights Armament and other companies, they just raised the price of all the shit to us so that it caught, it's the government price. Um, so... Congress also dicked us before UTM double dicked us. All right. So, fuck, I made it an hour and I, and I was late. I thought it'd be short. Uh, so I got some cool training talk in, too, uh, when I was really just trying to think of stumbling around something to say. The uh, I'll let you guys know when uh, we do the dry fire mag stuff. Uh, I got all the paperwork signed to be a dealer for them. So that's all done. Just waiting on the, on the SIG mag. And I went over on their social medias and they've been talking about it on there. So like, it must be getting close enough that like they're publicly saying it's coming. So soon as it does, uh, we're going to put together an opening order and I'll let you guys know. Uh, see if you all I'm reading this about, I got this and they didn't have a dot capable when ready and I had to get the ship machine and blah, 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 blah. Motherfuckers, if you all would just get 365s, like they're all, all right. I guess they had, some, had, there might be some models that aren't dot compatible, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if they still have any of those because now they got the plate in front of the rear sight. I think they all come that way. And like, just buy the damn macro. It's the best gun you can get. Um, and you can just put a dot right on it. 
take the plate off, put the dot on, take it off, put it back on, whatever you like. Like, I would do that. I would switch guns to a macro before I would get anything else machined. That's what I would do. All right. Anyhow, it's late. Klaus is sleeping right outside my door. Uh, I'm going to go play with him for a while. I will see you all next Wednesday. Um, over on the Facebooks, not here. I mean, you're, you might be on Facebook now, but not in these comments, but over on the Facebook. Um, tell me who I know that you know that you'd like to see as a guest on the live chat. I want to do more guests and like they don't have to be in the room with me. Uh, it's be awesome if they were, but. Tell me somebody you'd like to see, and I'll see if I can't figure out a way to get them on as a remote guest uh, for a live chat. If you don't do it quickly, uh, we have a week in order to get somebody on board. So, and if you don't know if I know them, you can just say their name anyway. But if I don't know them, it probably won't happen. But I know you don't know who I know and who I don't know. But let's make that let's make that a thing. Uh, tell me who you want, and I'll try and get them. And. Uh, I'm a nerd. I am a nerd. Total, total dork. I like Star Wars and Warhammer 40K and uh, other nerd stuff. Fly my ass to PM. Mark, you come to come here and I will, I, I assume you mean Pennsylvania, not primary arms, because uh, that's driving distance for you. Well, maybe not. Texas is big and nerd the other side. Uh, we'll put you on the fucking live chat. I don't know what we're talking about. We'll we, we will certainly pimp out your uh, running guns, so you should come up, and we'll get you. We'll make a video. Uh, but anyhow, tell me who you want to see, and uh, we'll. I'll try and get some some cool guests. And if you let me pick, it's just always going to be Mike. Uh, he's easy to talk to. Uh, anyhow, I'm gonna. Pop smoke, call for a hot extract, whatever weird shit we're saying this week. And I will see you all next Wednesday.